Welcome. This is the Jenkins Platform Special Interest Group. Today is the 24th of September, 2024. Topics on the list for today include container image updates. Um, oops. Container image updates for the controller. Container image updates for agents. Work in progress. And got one here. Damien needs to report on the unification of unifying build process. Yep. Spring security six, which we need to discuss briefly. Java support, the two plus two plus two support plan. Uh, this one I'd like more information on if there's any new information, Damien, as we go through it. And I think we can take out the Adoptium Summit. We talked about it last time. And I believe this one, I'm not sure this one has anything additional here. Does it, Damien, or should we include it? Um, I can report it. Yes. Okay, good. Then let's include it in the, in the agenda. Any other topics that need to be added to the agenda before we start working through the agenda? Okay, then let's go ahead. So... First topic, container image updates. So uh, October 3rd, we will we will deliver 2.426.3. Thanks, Chris Stern. As release lead. And 2.477.1, thanks in advance, Mark Wait as release lead. And 2478 was delivered just today. Damien, anything that you wanted to highlight there on any other changes and relevant to it? Not on the controller image, no. It Great. works as usual. Excellent. Okay, thanks. So we are, for everyone's clarity, we are... October 2 will be the last LTS release to support Java 11. Shortly after that release... Java 11 support will be removed from scripts, from packaging, from all sorts of things, because the next release, October 30th, will require Java 17 or newer. Okay, on the container images for agents. So I didn't see any new SSH agent. Oh, oh, take it back. Yes, these were these would have been highlighted by Bruno, and it was released just yesterday. Yes, okay. Yep. And the Docker agent, this one, we have one more, which is thanks to Adam Kaplan of Red Hat, we now have a UBI 9 agent image coming in Docker agent. I, I think I just saw a release notice there, Damien. Is it actually published or we're still waiting for a final publication? It's being built. Uh, please be careful. So the Dash 5, does, the version, uh, does not have the Arc Linux update. It's uh, the Dash 6, which is will also feature the UB9 new image. Uh, it's currently okay. being republished. Thanks. Okay, so UBI 9 will be in Dash 6. I had a question for you on that one. Mm -hmm. That one is we generate releases by some interactive process on release. Dot, t tell me a little bit more about the generate process. I had forgotten it, obviously. Yes. Uh, you have to go on the releases as a maintainer. You have a draft release maintained by release drafter. And the maintainer is responsible to uh, publish the release by giving it a tag and a name. So okay, we so rely they create a on a new the... GitHub release. Yes. Okay. Which will publish a tag. And that tag will be built, resulting on the Docker image being built and delivered to Docker Hub. Okay, great. So, so in that case, the GitHub release is the predecessor to the arrival of a container image on on hub.docker.com, not the successor. Okay, exactly. Builds the tag and publishes to hub.docker.com. Thank you. All right, so. So that was one, I think I'm actually a maintainer. I could have done that, but I think you did it for this, the six release for this. Yeah, exactly. We we were waiting for finishing the unifi unification of the build processes to start writing a proper documentation for that. Right, right. I'd forgotten about that. Okay, so that's the other one, which is unification of, and maybe let's bring that into the topic, unification of build process. Um. So... 
is that in the six version or will that be in seven? Uh, that will be on the seven. Okay. All right. Good. So we've got this one where unification of the agent build process and unifying what things, Damien? Help us help everybody understand. So the um, all the steps and stages uh, which get the code, uh, read the code, create a matrix of all the images to be built, whether on Linux or Windows, and then build them and eventually deploy them to the Docker Hub if it has been triggered by a tag and you have the proper credential. So the world CI and CD, it uses a bunch of Docker bake, make file and shell commands. And on Windows, we generate a Docker Compose valid file that is consumed by Docker Bake itself. The idea is that we use Docker Bake for everything now. That requires a bit of scripting, but that scripting removes the complexity of writing loops. And instead, we only have to describe which image, which operating system, which platform, which GDK. And then it builds a matrix for us. So that work are, has been... Okay. Yep, sorry, go ahead. You're, we, we've got a declarative definition of the of the matrix of 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 JDK operating system container, and then tooling executes the matrix and deploys it all. Exactly. So that work has been carried over by Hervé Lemur. So thanks, Hervé, for that huge work. We have used this used this for at least three months now on the SSH agent and the unifying is carrying over that tooling to Docker agents. We might have some tiny last minute changes to do on the agents because they are a bit different, but that allows us to have the same way of building and raising and testing these images for all agents at least. So all agent repositories are using a, a unified build process now. Thank you. Exactly. The, the long term will be to have a unified repository for all agents. So merging SSH agent into agent. So going from, and this is, that's, a, that's along the line of, we previously had three agent repositories. We've now exactly. collapsed to two. And, and the vision is eventually collapsed to one thanks to this unified build process. Absolutely. Combined, okay, combined. So the unified build process is a step towards unified repository. Uh, Bruno, if you want to run the meeting from here, you're welcome to do it. I don't have to keep typing, etc. No, no, you do it so much better than I do, Mark. <laughs> Please go ahead. All right. Well, and Damien, thank you. Anything else, Damien, you want to share on the container update, image updates for Jenkins agents? Uh, no, we are working on the Dash 7, but the UB9 uh, will be available soon. So thanks again for everyone helping on this one, particularly Harvey. And Great. that's all for me. All right. Thanks. Okay, so we had under work in progress on agents, we on images. We've actually got one item that's a little controversial, and I wanted to, to, this is a good place for a discussion of the controversy. So, so here is a proposal from from a contributor saying, "Hey, I'd like to add a one-click deployment option that allows them to, with a single click, deploy onto this onto elestio.io." Um, and my, my argument against this was, Hey, we've already got a list on the Jenkins download page of other cloud hosting instructions for Jenkins. I don't think we should give this specific hosting provider a special case when we have all these other providers at the higher level. Admittedly, this one is a little different, right? It's not quite the same as those other public hosting, but then again, um, if we look at Bitnami here, they're not really exactly the same as the others either. Bitnami is really not a cloud. They are a provider of cloud deployment technology to various clouds. So, so 
comments from others? Uh, I have really support. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Bruno. No, no, sorry. Um, yeah, I'm on the same page, I would say, because it's nice to know, but that's maybe not the right place to put this information in. Damien, your comment. I fully support your argument, Mark. The readme of the Docker image is not the location for that. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and close this, this in the platform SIG meeting, 24 September 2024, and decided this needs to be added, proposed to the um, download stage rather than the container image documentation. Okay with everybody? Great. All right. Thank you. Thanks very much. Okay. Very good. So closed. Next one was, okay, this one, Damien, you've already reported for us. The align with the build process has just merged today. Oh, nice. And yes. building, building and running or building and deploying. So, so nice positive dash seven will include this again, Damien. Is that what you said? Yes. Um, so we saw, a, we tried to include this one in the dash six, but that f the deployment part failed. So the CI works, but not the deployment. Ah, okay. Um, so we have changed the Dash 6 release not to include this, so we could deliver the UB9 images soon. Uh, Dash 6 just finished. We have a uh, SSH thing uh, uh, merged after that should be included on the Dash 7. And Hervé uh, is working on a patch. I shared with him the because he doesn't have access right now to Trusted CI, so I shared the, the pipeline errors that we had on Trusted and he should fix that. Along with, um, he's also transplanting things. We didn't want to burden Adam on the UB9 pull request with mm -hmm. that part. So I discussed that with Hervé prior to merging to have the proper order because merging one would have caused conflict on the other. And here, mm -hmm. the priority was helping Adam getting uh, his pull request merged and deliberated. Now, Hervé and I are working on that. Hervé is okay uh, with that uh, course of action. So he has a fix up here and we should expect another fix up on the tooling as well. Very good. Excellent. Okay. Most probably the Dash 7 will be released tomorrow because I won't have that much time. I don't know for Hervé, uh, unless one of you is uh, here to help him. That's that sounds, Dash 7 tomorrow sounds great. I'd much rather have, have you and Hervé working together one day later than having me insert myself into it and make a mess hey. that then involves you and Hervé tomorrow to clean up my mess and finish the job. Oh, trust me, Hervé and I, we can do a mess uh, on our own. It's more <laughs> a matter of communicating between maintainers. And I yes, think we but, but... lack that kind of tooling to help us here. So that's why uh, the SIG meeting is right on time. Okay, great. All right. And then the... Um, so has been merged, yes. These, so these are both merged... And this one, this, so this one, I think we can just move up into the merge and unifying the build process. Actually, aren't these, this, this is all, this was already done a long time ago, right? You know, we're SS, Docker SSH agent is the reference that was used to, to make Docker agent consistent. I think so. Right. So Docker SSH agent was the preferred method and we've now brought that into the other. Great. All right. Anything else on work in progress on images? Okay, next topic then. Spring pro oops, spring project end of life. So Spring Security announced that as of 31 August 2024, there would be no more releases of Spring Security 5. Uh, the Jenkins project dropped support for Spring Security 5 in weekly during August. Yes, congratulations. Weekly stopped supporting it before it reached end of life. Our LTS won't stop that support until... So Spring Security 6 was in weekly. Now 
that was 2.475. And now the next target is Jetty 12 plus EE9 plus Spring Security 6 in Jenkins LTS is 2.477.1, 30 October 2024. So we've got an upcoming release to October that will give us uh, the last Java 11 release. And then we, and that is Jetty 10, Java EE8 instead of Jakarta EE9, Spring Security 5. Then 30th of October, we switch over to Spring Security 6, Jetty 12, and Jakarta EE9. All right, so we've we've now done our third weekly release. We're on third, right? Force, we just finished 78. So we've done 75, 76, 77. No, that's four. We've done four releases. All right, four releases. And and the bug issue, the issue tracker looks really great. So we've chosen the next baseline. The next LTS baseline is is 2.477. And we've got, and that means, I guess, Bruno, your sample that builds, builds, no longer needs to build the Docker container in quick start it, tutorials. It still builds for all the weekly, but it doesn't use the Jakarta. Uh, it just, it uh, just artifacts. uses, it just uses the weekly. Standard weekly. Yeah. Got it. Okay. So quick start tutorials still allow testing of most recent. Yeah. By using weekly instead of using what we used to use, which was the the Jakarta branch. Link security, yeah. Great. Excellent. All right. Anything else on Spring Security? Kevin, I think from your perspective, documentation is a big effort there, and we'll be working through that over the course of the next six weeks as we get there, or five weeks as we get to that point. All right. Yep. Next item is 2 plus 2 plus 2 Java support plan. And here there's more work to be done. I haven't touched it in weeks. We've got to capture all of the things we had to do in order to get ready for, in order to do remove Java 11. And the intent is that this thing, this Jenkins enhancement proposal, will have one or more checklists that we can use when the time comes that we drop Java 17. And two years after that, when the time comes, we drop Java 21. And two years after that, when we drop, drop Java 25. So each of those, we, we want to get better and better at this. It's just the work has to be done in extracting what we did, putting it into these checklists, and then we'll refine the checklist. Last item here was a curl bug. Curl, and I think, Damien, you had shared it was even a problem with, with WGET? That there were there were it was not just curl, um, but ARM sixty four had a problem on Ubuntu twenty four. Anything new you want to share on that? So I haven't haven't checked uh, that problem uh, if it was fixed or not. Uh, we have an issue on the Jenkins infra desk that uh, has the link to the official tra tracker. Uh, Right now, that shouldn't impact the Jenkins project, at least for the uh, from the SIG uh, uh, platform SIG meeting, uh, because we provide Debian packages, and APT doesn't use curl or, or WGET to download things. Eventually, that could be an issue when downloading the APT key, but I don't think it has been reported. Ah, we, we, that, uh, I see a, a potential issue here. Our instruction tells the user to download the key when they install on Ubuntu 22, oh, 24 right. or 4. Um, so worth checking, but it only happened on certain uh, host names, Microsoft or GitHub, so I believe that should be okay for us. And we don't provide Docker images specific to Ubuntu, so that should be okay for the platform meeting. Very good. So, and I am pleased to share that the two loan, the two computers lent to the Jenkins project by Ampere are running Ubuntu 22. Oh, good thing. 
and and running it very well actually i'm really thrilled we've got we we still have more steps to make it a, make those two computers available to a larger larger group and to get more memory into them so that they're more useful they're sort of asymmetric right now with 100 plus cores but only 32 gig of ram Whoa. and so lots of processing but not enough memory to do the processing are running so running ubuntu 2204 not 2404 so they're not affected last topic uh docker agent rate limit our docker agent image and controller image so damien you want to share with us what's what the current status is uh so that was a build problem on the internal to us the only issue for end user was uh us not seeing updates being available immediately the we did a short-term fix so it only slow out the Jenkins project capacity to deliver quickly new images. Well, we have a, we have a short term fix. I manually uh, applied uh, a retry, a set of retries. So the step or the steps three that were failing sometimes are now retrying, but with a back of sys and, and temporization system. So we don't uh, we don't hammer the Tamarin API. We respect their servers. Because, I mean, if we have an array limit, it's for a reason. Mm -hmm. uh, but we tend to retry instead of failing. So the short term allows us to have eventually to wait usually two to three more minutes before being able to continue. But that avoids us having to rebuild or do a human doing something. Um, long term, so that that's the Hervé's pull request uh, with the fix. I see it's uh, written. I missed mm -hmm. the, the bullet. Uh, now we will have on the infra side to think about a way to cache Timurin downloads, but that's not an easy one uh, as far as we know right now. Uh, we have different solutions, but all of them are hackish. So okay. for now, we haven't seen the problem appear again. So unless we have Timurin going back to us or the problem appearing again, in these cases, we will see what we can do. Side note, uh, a slow delivery of the package could have an impact on the security advisory and the GenSec team. But in that case, uh, the fix allow the, the thing to go to completion. Two to three minutes is acceptable. And if we need a solution for the GenSec team, that means we should spend our effort into building the images one or two days before the advisory and only promote them to the Docker Hub when needed. So if we have, if any one of you see a problem during the security advisories that we will have in the upcoming weeks or months or years, please uh, go on the direction on let's have a staging package that we can test prior to the advisory on a private repo and we promote this publicly once it's security advisory day. That will be way faster. Right, because then we're not using the build process. It's just a push the bits. Exactly. So less bad surprise on last minute. Right. Excellent. Thank you. Any other topics we need to highlight today in Platform SIG? Uh, we only have three minutes or so, but I have one, which maybe not the right place to talk about that, but whatever. Uh, speaking of Timurin, I got a message from Timurin today uh, asking, I put it in the chat. <laughs> Are you aware of anyone that tried running a Jenkins agent under emulation or via a proxy system? So I was, wait, what? Uh, I'm not so sure I understand. Uh, the reason is we'll drop agent support for JDK 11 uh, with the next LTS, right? Right. I'm not sure I understand so, the question. What, yeah, I mean, I don't either. What, what, yeah. do they, what does that mean in emulation, emulating RISC-V, emulating... I have no idea. RPC? The thing is, um, they are using Solaris agents. And JDK 11 works oh. Solaris. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, the real world comes back to haunt us. Yeah. Oh, that's very good. Okay, all right, so... So now I'm going to say what you just said and put it in the notes because, okay, and Solaris agents can only run, cannot run Java 17. No. Right, because Java 17 support has been dropped from Solaris, right? Yeah. It, it, and no Java 17 for Solaris. Java 17 from Tamarin is only available for, for Windows. 
ARM64, uh, PowerPC 64 LE, System 390, and not even yet fully available for Risk Five, right? So there. Yep. Yep. Okay. So all right. Uh, so so I think the answer is no, you're doomed. Or <laughs> do we have anything else to propose? Yeah. So Solaris has the concept of container. Uh, I think the name is Zones. That's Solaris Zones. That's the same idea. That's the uh, same root. That's the same OpenVZ zone, as far as I remember. Uh, maybe that could be uh, something to uh, to check with them if they know people that could help us on that area. Uh, in the same way we blocked the PPC and S390X support on IRM, we will need a sponsor to get started on working with a Solaris zone. If we have a Solaris agent, even a GDK11, we can bootstrap. Well, but but that would mean we'd have to build Java 17 for Solaris ourselves, unless, wouldn't it? Unless, uh, as far as I remember, the zones were able to run other operating system than Solaris itself. So we should be able to have a free BSD image, which worked very well. Oh, I thought you would propose CentOS 7. <clears throat> Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> No, Interesting. me running a Red Hat system, no way. Okay, so so th that that what you're proposing sounds far outside of my recollection of of zones, but but that's I had very limited exposure to Solaris zones. I didn't know they could run another host. I thought they were strictly a the the same uh, co a concept similar to FreeBSD jails and yes, FreeBSD. Exactly. Yeah, but FreeBSD jails only run FreeBSD inside the jail. So, so they've, but, but nonetheless, that's, it's an interesting thought for, I think Bruno, the answer short term is their Solaris 11 agents don't have any path forward unless yeah. Oracle is willing to donate Java 17 on Solaris. And I don't know if Oracle even supports Java 17 on Solaris, you know, that's the, certainly Temerin doesn't. But if Oracle did, then maybe it could work. I see. Thank you. Yeah. Was, okay. So no. So any build, any Temerin build that rec that depends on Java, on Solaris agents, agents will be end of life at thirtieth of October, twenty twenty four. Effectively, right? Tooling wise, because we let's call it this way solaris agents with java 11. let's be very specific if they can find a way to get java 17 on a solaris agent then no problem got it thank you if you are if you're watching the video we are sorry <laughs> well well and and we're we're happy to discuss further any other topics that need to be raised here okay recording will be available in 24 to 48 hours. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Have a good day, everyone.